months or something, um, please explain more or elaborate how the United States keep their economy stable. And the second is my personal point that I would like to ask your humbleness to invite President University students to join study of the United States Institute's program. Thank you. Stable and growing. Um, that has been the central preoccupation of President Obama for his entire presidency. Because as you know, when he became president, uh, the United States was in a very deep recession. Uh, major industries like the car industry were in danger of going under. The financial industry was on the brink of collapse with uh, the failure of Lehman Brothers and many, many other Wall Street firms. So it was a very, very dire situation. And the president took some quite controversial steps at the time. For example, taking over some of the car companies to ensure that there would be new investment. Uh, and then they were later privatized and are now thriving. Likewise, I mentioned manufacturing in my, in my statement. Um, for many years, people have said that manufacturing was dead in the United States. But in fact, we've come back very strong, in part because labor, uh, labor uh, wage rates have come down, but also importantly because the shale gas revolution in the United States, the new technology that has come in as a result of that, has brought down energy prices and ironically is now going to make the United States one of the world's largest producers of oil rather than one of the largest experts, but particularly focused on jobs because we need to put Americans back to work because they are the foundation of consumer spending and our consumer spending is the foundation of the global economy. If our consumer spending is going well and our economy is going well and then we will be able to import more from countries like Indonesia. But the final piece of the whole puzzle is to work as closely as possible with friends like Indonesia to uh, grow American exports and American investment around the world. And so that's why that's one of my most important priorities uh, here, but also for ambassadors around the world. Now on the second question of studies in American studies. First of all, let me say that we one of our most important objectives is to encourage more Indonesians to go and study in the United States and also to have more Americans coming here. As I said, I think that this will be of great benefit to all of you because you will have access to what, what are widely considered the greatest universities in the world. Uh, the, 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 the universities with the best research laboratories and the best facilities of many, many different kinds uh, in which you can pursue your interests and your dreams and then bring those skills that you've learned back to Indonesia. And American universities are very interested to have more Indonesian students. Your students are of very, very high quality. They always do well in American universities. And as I said in my remarks, you now have uh, scholarship programs through your LPDP uh, program, the, through the Ministry of Finance, that will provide the top scholars in the country with uh, full scholarships to study in the United States and other countries. So we very much hope you will take advantage of that. And we also very much hope that you'll go because, frankly, we need more Indonesians in America to, to tell Indonesia's story. Indonesia is still not widely known and understood in America. And I think Americans need to understand how much your country has changed and how important a partner your country now is to the United States. So having more students there will help to train our next generation uh, in what a valuable partner Indonesia is going to be for us. Thank you. I have two questions. First is, uh, based on your uh, statement just now that you said, uh, America and China are the two largest market in the world, right? And then my question are, besides that, as we know that Japan and Korea are also the largest market in the world,
especially in the technology and transportation. My question is, how do the U.S. compete with uh, these countries in terms of global market? My second question is uh, about the... I want to ask your opinion about this, uh, about this statement. What, what do you have in your mind about IMF and World Bank? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for both those good questions. Uh, so the first question was just how, how will the United States compete with China in the 21st century? And uh, you know that's a, a, a question that we receive very often. And my answer is very well, um, at least economically. Um, you know, I want to say that we, as I said in my remarks, we are not seeking to contain China. Uh, President Obama and others have said repeatedly that we welcome the rise of China. Uh, we consider China an economic partner. And we have worked very hard so that are being developed are mostly taking place in the United States. Many of them are manufactured in China because there are lower wage costs. But uh, many of the products that you use here, iPads, iPods, iPhones, those were all developed in the United States. Uh, they are manufactured in China, and that's good. That's good for us because it keeps prices low. It's good for your, your consumers as well. But I'm very confident that, that the American economy, because of our combination of very good universities, strong rule of law that protects patents, that protects intellectual property, and a very strong venture capital system, will continue to ensure that that innovation will occur in the United States. And China does not yet have those combination of assets, so it's going to be more difficult for Chinese companies to innovate like that. So I think we will continue to, to have that, that edge, and you will continue to see new products and new, uh, both pro goods and services emerging from the United States that will allow us to remain a dynamic economy. Now on the question of the IMF and the World Bank, um, the United States is, uh, of course, provides about one quarter of the budget for both of those international institutions, and that's part of our assessed contribution. And we very strongly support their roles around the world. Uh, the IMF provides extraordinarily important economic advice to countries around the world that is independent and objective, uh, including to Indonesia, including to the United States. And, uh, a very good example of what they're doing is right now in Ukraine, where the Ukrainian economy is suffering a great deal. People are very worried about the stability of, the, of Ukraine, and the IMF has done what it's supposed to do, which is to step in with a very important adjustment loan to help Ukraine to manage this transition that it is now going through. Likewise, the World Bank uh, is the leading lender, uh, particularly to try to address poverty. Uh, Indonesia still has uh, important pockets of poverty around the country, and so it's very, very important to continue to provide uh, lending for education, for health services, for water and sanitation, for, for all the other things that will help to lift uh, Indonesians out of poverty, and they do those same things around the world. So, question. Um, first of all, just in terms of, you know, what is the United States doing here in Indonesia? Um, as I said, we, we have a very broad, comprehensive partnership now between the United States and Indonesia. Uh, we are cooperating in just about every imaginable field that you can think of. Uh, and I think that shows the strength of the partnership between our two countries. Um, we have, just to, just to give you an example, we have a very important program to work on clean energy here to help catalyze clean energy. So we are uh, spending approximately $330 million over the next four years to help to hopefully jumpstart investment in clean energy and to help reduce greenhouse gases and to help keep energy costs down for Indonesian consumers. On the education front, uh, as I said, it's one of our most important objectives is to increase educational cooperation in both directions. So we're spending a lot of money to help catalyze partnerships between American universities and Indonesian universities. We're taking steps 
to uh, establish what we call Education USA Advisory Centers. Uh, there's a very important one that you can find at, uh, at America that many of you may have visited at Pacific Place Mall. And you can go there and learn all about all the different, uh, not only universities in America, but also scholarship opportunities. Uh, in America, we don't so much provide, the government does not provide scholarships either to Americans uh, or to farmers. Uh, mostly in our system, it's done by the universities themselves. And there are many, many opportunities because every university wants more foreign students. And they're particularly interested to have students from important countries like Indonesia. Furthermore, as I said, you have your own government is providing many, many different kinds of scholarships for study in the United States. So the money is not the, the crucial thing. The crucial thing is to figure out where you'd like to uh, attend school and what your interests are and then do some research about where you think the, the best university might be, and then approach us to take, to get information about the, the exams you must take, maybe it's the GRE or other kinds of exams, and we're offering those in more and more cities around uh, Indonesia. And then even more importantly, to uh, speak directly to the university, and once you're accepted, to Tell them what your financial situation is. More than likely, they'll be willing to give you a scholarship. Uh, so you should, again, don't worry too much about the money. It's more figuring out where, what, what university is going to um, offer you the best choice for the future that you want to pursue. Um, what was it? I think that was it. Right? Yeah. So thank you again for that question. And I have uh, two questions. Number one, uh, as we know, every business people want have uh, their business expand to the uh, international or global market, right? And today I want to ask uh, about the foreign policy that said by the United States of America received about the business that come from the other station to the American itself. That's number one, and the second one is about uh, as a young business people, we have a innovation, we have a strategy to expand our business in national uh, in national area. Uh, if you have a suggestion for us, uh, can you give suggestion to young business people? What strategy? What kind of strategy that we can uh, do? In and first of all, let me say, I'm so glad to hear that you're looking to, to export, because that's very, very important. You have a, a very uh, growing domestic market, but if you export, you'll make sure that your, your prices are competitive, and you'll be able to, you have a, a huge global market before you. Um, the, the second thing I'd like to say is that I've been so impressed with the many young Indonesians that I've met uh, who are very, very entrepreneurial uh, and have a vision. And the, the, the best advice I ever heard was uh, from people like Steve Jobs at Apple, who, have to, who tell young entrepreneurs, uh, first of all, you should never be afraid to fail. Most entrepreneurs in America who are now billionaires, started out as failures. They didn't quite get their ideas quite right to begin with. Um, and Steve Jobs is the same way. You may, may remember that Steve Jobs was actually fired from Apple at one point. He then later came back, was rehired, and they uh, then invented the iPad and some of the other products that you're seeing these days. And there are many, many other examples like that. Henry Ford, who invented the production line, the assembly line, uh, and, and then later started Ford Motor Company, had many, many different failures before he was finally became uh, one of the most successful manufacturers in history. So don't, don't, don't be worried if you don't get your ideas quite right. Pursue your dream and, and, and you will get it. Secondly, there are a number of programs here. Uh, Pop Chris Cantor was just here from Cotton. He has been a wonderful mentor for many young Indonesian entrepreneurs 
through something called GEPI, the Global Entrepreneurship Program. And you can Google that. And uh, you'll find that they give advice for young entrepreneurs and young innovators about how to develop their ideas, how to bring them to market, how to raise venture capital, all of those things which are very important to starting a small business and seeing it grow and seeing it succeed. So I encourage you to, to uh, be in touch with the people from Gepi because they're very, they're very good about this and they're all themselves successful business people who can provide advice for young entrepreneurs in, in, in Indonesia. In terms of developing markets, um, you can, you can work through Canada, you can work through your own embassies overseas who are there to help you to figure out uh, how to export to the United States, for example. And, you know, we're very open to that. We, we always want to have more products and more services. And as I say, you already have a very large trade surplus with the United States. So I can tell you that Indonesians are very good at exporting to America. And we're, we're very glad to have more. So thank you very much. Uh, let's uh, move on to the second session. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, another four questions. We're going to uh, take another four questions. But uh, for this session, that if uh, the question is related as well to uh, something like entrepreneurship, things like that, then probably Mr. Darbo also want to have a little comment on that as well. Because if you ask for the experience, Mr. Darwin of his is a living uh, proof of the entrepreneurship as a, as a successful entrepreneur here. So probably Mr. Darwin also like to uh, give a little comment on the questions or if there is a question on uh, entrepreneurship or something like that. So if to add this to Mr. Darwin. said that we have here established the so-called KEPI uh, or Global Enterprising Program in Indonesia which was initiated by President Obama. Uh, I'm also a member of KP and I actually uh, was invited by the ambassador about a few months ago uh, uh, to talk about how we can progress with KP. And I invited uh, back uh, the ambassador to visit our university and also to see the potential in Jababeka Industrial Park, how we can actually produce entrepreneurs uh, together with the President University and with the support of USD. There are many factories here, big companies also from USD, which requires supply chains. And uh, you as a student from President University have got very good opportunity actually to learn from the beginning about entrepreneurship by working in the companies here and at the same time perhaps uh, you yourself or jointly can buy a small shop or factory, standard factory building here through loan and through capis uh, arrangement for uh, angel investor to help you so that you could start uh, doing some business with the big companies here and that will give you a good experience to be entrepreneurs while you are still studying or when you just uh, finish your graduation. And uh, USA, as the ambassador said, is a large market where you can always uh, export to USA, uh, adding value to the, the rich raw materials which we have in Indonesia. I think this is uh, what President Obama has been initiating to help countries like Indonesia to create more entrepreneurs, to create more economy, so this will help to uh, balance the uh, current problem in, in the world now, that uh, we need to uh, improve more in the uh, bigger economy in the areas of countries like Indonesia and other developing countries. It's on the field and support from many companies here and also angel investors which has been organized locally. If you need any further information, you can always contact uh, the university who will then uh, uh, give the information to me for me to help. And also I will liaise to KP and also uh, Ambassador Spencer team for the progress of KP. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Tamara, for the very insightful uh, information. Alright, so uh, let's continue for the next session. So I will take another formal question. Okay, so um, 